you have an enemy. The enemy is your own sick nature, which I must be very careful to cure and heal. It's your selfishness. It's your sinfulness. And I know it's in you. And it's in every one of you. You have been infected with that. And I have come to heal you of your sinfulness. But you have an enemy. And his name is the devil. You have an enemy. And his name is Satan. You have an enemy and it's the ancient serpent that caused your mother and your father to fall. And there is a clash between me and him. I, once you set me up as a commander in your heart, once you have enthroned me as the commander of your heart, once you have placed me as the head, as the king, now there is set up already in your heart. He's already there, and I know him. And he hates me, and he hates you as you're entering into my kingdom. St. Ignatius, in teaching this battle, sets it up because there is a clash between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The commander of the kingdom of darkness is Satan, is the devil, is the ancient serpent. And this battle is going on in every soul. Every human heart is experiencing this battle. The ordinary way by which the devil wants to destroy that kingdom in its ordinary way is temptation. When Jesus said in those last two prayers of the Our Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, he had his sight set right on this battle. Lead us not into temptation, because that's exactly what this kingdom of darkness wants to do. Rob the soul, and the soul is here, and it's the battleground. Jesus, the kingdom of of love, Satan, the kingdom of hatred, Jesus, the kingdom of light, Satan, the kingdom of darkness, Jesus, the king of truth, I have come that they may know the truth, the Satan, you are a liar, Jesus called him, and the father of lies, wanting and leading the soul and deceiving it. And so these are constantly going, all day long, all night, there is this, how precious is this soul that God would have sent his son from heaven to save my soul, me, individually, personally, if I were the only soul in this world lost in sin, God would have sent Jesus to save me. So precious am I to God. And so that's the battle. And Satan wanting to rob me. Why and why is this? Why does the devil hate us so much? He is a he is a, a light of great creation. He is the most powerful angel as the head. That's who the commander is. Lucifer. He is the bearer of light a seraphic angel, and he would not serve. And it was revealed to him, most likely, that God had chosen Mary to be sinless. When it was known by, was she the one that was the temptation for, for the evil one? That's why he hates her so much. And right at the beginning, when the serpent brought our first mother under his power, the first Eve, it was the second Eve. A woman will come and crush your head. And her offspring will also crush you. That's us. And the saints who are going to overcome and destroy his kingdom, they will crush your head. 
Jesus is going to come and save us from the evil one because we've all come under the power of Satan. We're all under the power of sin and we're all under the power of death. No matter where you are in the world, the only one who came into this world 2,015 years ago is Jesus. On the cross, he died and rose. He conquered sin and Satan and death. He's the only one that conquered. And now he has united me to him. I am in him. Now I, through him, have the power, the strength, the authority to drive him out. I and Jesus can come become one. Now this is why it's his time and he has this little time to destroy me. And so these 86 years that I've lived and however long you've lived, he, there is the battle constantly going on. And God is constantly coming into our lives to save us, to redeem us, to remove us from this power. And our soul is that which God has come to redeem. And this soul, same soul, is that which he has come to destroy. He wants to destroy this. And this battle is going on. Pitch head on every day. Self-centeredness. What is the key to the temptation to serve the I over the Lord? What is the battle in each one of our souls? I over God. That's exactly what Eve fell to. Do you know what the evil one says to you, Eve? Yeah, why doesn't God want you to eat that fruit? Because you will become like him. And then they ate and they wanted to become like God. That was the first battle, to serve self and obey self over God. Whereas God is the one who wants to give us life, the devil has deceived us and has continued to deceive us. If you want to really live, do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Go where you want to go. And as we feed our own egos, we destroy ourselves. And the first Adam and the first Eve led us into this ego-centered worship. And the second Adam and the second Eve are come into the world to assist us, to bring us to the God who wants to save us and give us true life and truth and love. That happened uh, as the scriptures began to uh, be challenged. Whether the scriptures were really telling us that that are these stories that are teaching that kind of mythical uh, stories that are making a point, but the reality of the devil, and that is so contrary. You know, it's the editing of the scriptures because our Lord is dealing with the devil and making a distinction between illnesses and the real entity that he's dealing with, which was Satan, and how that battle took place and how he showed his authority over those, those demons. And the church, in the manual, it goes to how the church has taught us. It's a matter of faith that the church has taught us about the existence of the devil. It's a whole council was devoted, the latter and four council, to say the devil is a reality. This is not the first time somebody has fallen into heresy regarding this teaching. There are people who have denied 
the existence of the devil before. And the church and her saints and the teaching of the church has been consistent that there are demons and there, I think it's a pity that we don't teach angels. It, you know, to, we have them right in our, in our liturgy and I, I think it's more important. I think th our modern world will not admit of anything except what we can see and weigh and, uh, and measure. And we only know the material world. So we don't uh, know the existence of uh, spiritual entities. It's uh, really dangerous for, not, for us not to know who our enemies are because it can have such a destructive influence. Look, at the, look at the power he's having over us today because of people like your parish priest. Those who are supposed to be leaders uh, and teachers of light are really uh, themselves in great darkness. How can they lead the people into light? Even though we pray that prayer, lead us not into temptation, that's the ordinary activity of Satan. Now, the, the entry into our, our, our hearts and our, our, our thoughts and how infrequently we ask the Holy Spirit to expose our thinking to us. All spiritual writers talk about you must be aware of your thoughts. You know, it's when your thoughts begin to be changed and, and manipulated by an outside force and, and there are gradually being darkened. And we can take activities of today. If, if we take pornography of today and its widespread uh, e existence and you go back to when the Kinsey report come out and just simply said, all sexual activity is good. All s they, they didn't make any distinction because they, they just simply studied sexual activity. And since then, pornography has proliferated. Now, wh how does that get manipulated in the media and in television and in, uh, in, in somebody just recently, I didn't see the Super Bowl, th but they were talking about and commenting on the ads and what attracts and how the, uh, this, this kind of activity becomes so familiar that the people who sit and talk about the frogs that are in hot water until they get boiled to death. They don't even know because of the gradualness of the heat until they're dead. They don't know that they're dying until they're dead. Spiritually, that gra gradual uh, take, taking over of the media has been going on for years and years. And it's a, it's a graduation and how slowly he works, but how effectively against human nature. The total destruction of a human being is for that person to become so self-centered that they have to self-medicate. How do you know that that brings what it brings? You have to just begin to see what happens to self, self-directed, self-medicated people. Like Robin Williams, they finally hang themselves. They die at their own hands because there's, you see, you can't really only be an animal. Animals do that. And not, but they don't even do what we do because we have another dimension to us and that is this soul. Every soul feels and experiences the emptiness, the desolation when the soul isn't fed, when the spirit isn't cared for. What brings joy and peace and happiness? 
love. What brings death and destruction? Self-centeredness, selfishness, doing what I want to do. That's exactly how it brings the destruction of the individual. Victory, mm -hmm. resurrection. When, when Jesus was, was maligned, he, he, re he came back with love. How do you test love? By opposing it. And all the opposition that was brought against him was responded with love. The, 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 the only religion that teaches forgiveness is Christianity. There is no other religion that teaches it. Uh, Jewish religion doesn't teach it. Islam doesn't teach it. No other religion teaches. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And so all the powers that came against him, he, not, he, 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 didn't, oh, he didn't retaliate, but he loved in return. Now, that power of love on the cross ends in death. But that death ends in resurrection. The story of Jesus is not complete until we hear the resurrection. On the resurrection day, he conquered death. He's alive. And his wounds were glorious. What they wanted to kill him with, he now conquers with. And now, how can you not be one? And when you're one with him, that same road is for you. You will also conquer death. You will also conquer sin. And you will also conquer death and uh, the devil by, with, and in Jesus Christ. Because he is the one who does it through us. We must teach the resurrection. Husbands and wives, where does it start? Forgiving each other. And that, that, is, that is constantly, you know, when, when I see how important it is for that, that beginning of, of love. Because how, who can hurt one another more than two people in love, like a husband and wife? And no one knows that better than husbands and wives what examples they could be to the whole world because of their experience of hurting each other. And what is their, what is their experience? Their egocentricity. That this man, when he marries this woman, may be filled with love for her, but he has such a love for himself. And this woman, who may have such a love for this man, but her love for herself, and when those meet each other, and then you have a lifetime for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, and all these things on a daily basis, plus catching the children that come off in that nest, and as they watch them, as this family grows, and in the middle of it, the sacred heart, in Christ, being in the middle of the husband-wife relationship, in the middle of parent-children, children-parent, and the magnificent teaching of the radiating out out there to the village and the family. It's just a, a great uh, renewal of civilization through love. That's why when John Paul called for the civilization of love only could come through the sacred heart. It's the throne of the sacred heart which will bring the civilization of all mankind through love. It's a new era of the world. And Jesus 
We're assured by the Immaculate Heart of Mary at Fatima will conquer through his Sacred Heart. Mm -hmm.